Hi guys, my name is Ryan, the Frugal Analyst, and today I'll share with you my Tesla solar panel performance update and compare it to my initial expectations. So right now I have over two years of performance data. I bought the system back in November 2017 and it's a 3.6 kilowatt hour system that is located in San Diego, California. Now I'll just use the full 2018 and 2019 and compare those numbers uh, to my initial expectation. When I first bought the system, they were estimating that my first year would be around 5,500 kilowatt hour and usually there's a, a reduction in performance of around one third to half a percent uh, per year every single year. So, so far in 2018, I received a, a total of over 6,000 kilowatt hour. So that's above expectation. And in 2019, I received over 5,800 kilowatt hour, still above expectation, but it did decrease negative 4% year over year. And there's definitely a lot more rain in San Diego in 2019. So I kind of expected the performance to drop. Now, last year, Tesla did send me an email to make sure that I clean my panels to receive maximum performance. I actually didn't do anything to my panels. I feel like if you clean your solar panels, the labor cost is just too expensive for the added performance that you can get. Maybe I could eke out an extra one or two percent but cleaning my panels is probably not worth it and also in my area there isn't any leaves or any trees that's nearby the panels so i didn't do any solar cleaning and if i did maybe i could get a performance closer to my first year but it's still above expectation so i'm pretty happy with the system now i chart out my data here and this is basically what I got. 2019 basically underperformed 2018 in most months. June has the biggest differences. In 2018, it was the highest solar production ever. And that makes sense because June is usually when we have the longest sunlight. Unfortunately, in 2019, it, it was a bit cloudy and performance topped out in July. Averaging the months together to get a seasonality chart, we can see that June to August give the most power. And each of those months are producing double than December, uh, which is basically the worst month of the year. As far as my production guarantee from Tesla, they guarantee around 85% of the production. And it says if I didn't make at least 9,400 kilowatt hour by the second year, I can get a small payout. But since I exceeded expectations, uh, there was no guarantee payout given. Overall, I'm happy with my Tesla solar performance. Tesla dropped the solar panel prices last year and they also reduced the referral bonus. So if you're looking to get a Tesla panel, use my referral link in the description of this video to get $100 off. As far as the income tax credit, if you're looking to get solar this year, there is still a 26% federal tax credit that you can get this year in 2020 and that percentage will drop down to 22% next year. And if you do get solar and you wanna take advantage of the high seasonality month, I think uh, this time in January would be a good time to start because it does take a few months to actually put on solar on your house. So if you really want to get the June, July and August peak months, you probably want to get your process started February at the latest. So that's it for my performance. If you already own a solar panel, I recommend every year to check your inverter to make sure that all of your panels are working. For my inverter, I have to click this button on the bottom of the inverter to and go through the screen to make sure that all of my 11 panels are working. So right now in here, it shows 11 out of 11 that is working. I had a friend whose panel didn't all show up. So I think he was missing one panel and it was giving him less production. So uh, make sure you check uh, to make sure that your panels are all working. So that's it for this video. All my spreadsheet will be in the bottom of this video in the description. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.